What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the power of dollar cost averaging and buying the dip, especially when your portfolio is not doing well. For this example, we're going to be showcasing my A-Ray ETF, which for many of you guys that have been following this channel know that this is my growth portfolio, which I started around February and to current date, it's been doing pretty bad. So in this video, if you guys want to see how dollar cost averaging has helped me out, stay tuned and you guys already know, cue that intro. So for those of you guys that don't know what's going on with this portfolio, this is my growth portfolio and the goal of this portfolio is to build as much growth as possible and then hopefully one day we'll be able to take some of the profits and be able to reinvest it into a more secure asset, for example, dividend stocks or maybe even some type of form of real estate. But for now, we're still in that growth phase, so we're still trying to grow this portfolio as much as possible. Back on February 16th of this year, 2021, I decided to pull out all of my stocks from Acorns, which I have a video on, so I'll leave a link in the description, and then put it from Acorns to here. So essentially, I sold out of the S&P 500 and got into my growth portfolio, which, you know, honestly, on February 16th, we all know what happened to the markets. And yeah, let's just say it was a very bad decision and very bad timing. But nonetheless, the fact of the matter remains that no one's going to be able to time the market accurately, especially me. I have a reputation around this channel as being the world's worst timer, which honestly, I'm going to live up to that name. February 16th just really wasn't my day. I mean, I put in $2,000 and since then, you guys can kind of see that it's been my portfolio has just not been performing. And this is with me investing weekly every single week putting in money as well and you guys can kind of just see my portfolio has been flat and of course as of late it's been doing really well which we're going to touch upon later in the video but just to kind of reiterate here i've got up tesla since this year as well as the s p 500 so i got in about february 16th once again i sold out of the s p 500 and into tesla and ever since then from february all the way to let's just say roughly september Tesla has been down. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So I've been just kind of buying the dip. Meanwhile, the one that I sold out of the S&P 500 had just been continuously going up and up. And to this date over here, I mean, which one would you rather be in? Obviously the S&P 500 because it's been performing. But I mean, luckily buying the dip has not only lowered my cost average, but it's also been helping me to grow my position for cheaper within Tesla. And this is what this video is gonna be about. It's not just Tesla, it's the majority of all my stocks, which will be in the link in the description if you guys wanna check it out for yourself. Most of these that I bought on February 16th have just been continuously down and I've just been continuously buying the dip. Just to kind of show you guys, my first initial deposit was February 16th with $2,000. And this is me continuously buying into my growth portfolio. I know it's not a lot, $25 per week, but you know, gradually I started investing more and more. And then here and there where the dips were a lot heavier, for example, on February 23rd, I put in about $200. And this is just something that I've been doing every single week, trying to grow more and more. And then just recently I started bumping up that $25 to even more. But you know what, at the end of the day, it's just all about con consistency and growing your portfolio and buying the dips. And that's what this video is all about. And you know, it's not a bad strategy, especially if it works out in the long term. But at the same time, you got to be careful in what type of stocks you invest to because there's going to be certain times when a certain stock won't ever get back to the same level when you buy that dip. For example, the, you know, the Japanese markets, which I won't go too much into detail about, but there's going to be certain stocks where once you buy the dip, it may never return. And these stocks that I'm actually buying, which I'll show you guys over here, these are all stocks that I have very high conviction in. And the ones that I don't really have as much conviction in are not going to be inside of this portfolio. They're going to be in my speculative portfolio. These are all stocks that I believe in, whether I have their products or I use their products or I'm very familiar about their business model. Just a quick disclaimer, guys, I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. So this is all things that I'm talking about merely out of entertainment. None of this is recommendations. It's just something that I do personally. So nonetheless, let's take a look at the Japanese stock market. So we can see that around this time, the Japanese stock market completely peaked. But since then, about 1991, the stock market has never recovered to that same level. Yes, if you bought the dip in 22, 2002, 2013 and whatnot, you would be up. But if you're buying the dip starting here, there's no promise that you're going to be able to recover to the same level. 
But for me, for example, I do believe in the American stock market and I don't think that all the implications that are going on right now are that big of an issue to warrant a huge decrease like this and not being able to reach the same level. I don't think that we're in that big of a bubble. So that's why I'm buying the dip. So just a quick disclaimer how to put that out there. But anyways, let's get back to the video. All right, so what I wanna show you guys is this particular stock in here, Tesla. We're not gonna go through every single one of my stocks because that video can get super long, but this is just an, a good example of what I'm talking about and to show the power of buying the dip and dollar cost averaging. So anyways, as we can see over here, my gain is about $169 nice and have a return about 33 percent which is awesome you know i really can't complain at all especially at the price point i initially bought it at and how it's performing over the past year almost year so anyways let's take a look i got almost a share which i wish i had even more and my average share price is 707 dollars 707 dollars is still quite a lot but i'm really not complaining considering that my initial price point of buying it was so much higher and let me just show you guys what i'm talking about so the first time that I bought Tesla back in February 16th, my price, my cost basis was $813, which is nuts. I bought $260 worth of Tesla shares and $813 was my share price. Now that's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if we had done that today and we just left it, of course I would still be up to this date, but I wouldn't have been able to be up as much and I would also not have too much of a quantity. I believe I had about a third of a share. And literally the day following, of course, the stock dip. So I bought a little bit more, $11 worth, which again, I know is not a lot, but we're building on this portfolio and hopefully we'll be able to grow even more. So from 813, I went down to 794. And of course, you know, I'm always here buying the dip. So here's another opportunity. So I got 75 more dollars into it by $626. So we're just continuously lowering the average share price. And this is what I mean by buying the dip gotta be smart about buying the dip here's another one where i bought another 75 dollars worth at lower than 600 dollars and this is majority of where buying the dip really comes in handy all right guys this is where i'm going to be dropping gems of knowledge so guys get out your pens and paper and hopefully you guys will be able to learn something and if you did feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to hopefully be able to learn more or at least stick around for the journey and hopefully we can all grow our wealth together so anyways, what I'm trying to say over here is not only when you're buying the dip, are you getting more capital appreciation? For example, if I hadn't bought the dip, I wouldn't be up $169. What I'm also doing is I'm building upon the quantity of shares that I have. So what I mean by this is I'm getting more and more shares of Tesla at a cheaper price. So it's kind of like a bang for your buck or more for your dollar, however you want to spin it. So at the end of the day, it's a great tool to be able to build your wealth. If you're buying a company and you believe in it and you have the conviction in it and you know that it's going to grow in the long term, then buying the dip makes perfect sense. It's a win-win situation. You're able to get more of your company that you love and want and you're being able to get a bang for your buck. So this is exactly why buying the dip is so awesome. I mean, I love to have so much more Tesla. I wouldn't have this much shares. I would have maybe half a share if I wasn't buying the dip. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important to be able to buy the dip. All in all, I don't want to sound like I all in all, I don't want myself to sound like I'm a genius because I'm really not. The whole point of this portfolio was to outperform the S&P 500. And then, I mean, if we take a look, I'm at an average return of 3.39% year to date. And I believe the S&P 500 was up about, let's just see, about 25%, 22%, which is just absolutely nuts. I'm not even close to my goal. So definitely don't think I'm a genius or anything like that. Just want to reiterate the importance of buying the dip. And hopefully one day I'll be able to outperform the S&P 500 by way more. I mean, there's tons of opportunity within my own portfolio. Yes, I've done well in Tesla. Yes, I've done well in Etsy. But as a YouTuber, as someone that shares their personal experience on investing, and hopefully I'll be able to help you guys learn as well, I want to show you guys my L's too. So these are a bunch of different companies I'm also down in. Neo, Hero, ArcW, Google, Palantir. These are some of the ones that I'm actually down on as well. And recently, Disney. That's a video that I just came out with, which, by the way, I believe Disney is going to be a great stock. So I'm buying heavily on the dip. I don't even care how low it goes. In fact, when you're buying the dip, you don't really care how low a stock goes, especially if you believe in it. It's perfect. You know, I love to see a stock down. For example, 
if Tesla, if Tesla's at $900 now, I mean, I'm not going to be buying into Tesla anymore. Every time I get my weekly, whatever it is, my weekly investing, I'm not going to be putting into Tesla because I'll be averaging up. But there's so much more opportunities in Neo, Hero, and so on. So this is essentially the direction I'm trying to go in. And hopefully you guys can learn a little bit about buying the dip. And if you guys are scared about it, just think about it this way. Why did you buy the stock? What you think is going to go on this stock? And do you really believe it or not? For example, I mean, let's just let's just give an example. Do you think Amazon's going to be here in 10 to 20, 30 years? If yes, then, you know, do a little bit of research and maybe you can add it to your own portfolio. If you don't believe in it, then why would it be in your portfolio? These are just some things to think about before attempting to buy a stock, even before even thinking about buying the dip. Well, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I know again my portfolio is not amazing it's very small as one person commented before it's a baby growth portfolio which i'm not complaining against i mean it's pretty accurate we're still growing it but you know what one day hopefully this portfolio is going to be great it's going to outperform the s p 500 so if you guys want to see all that you know stay tuned hit the subscribe button stick around for the journey or if you guys learn anything or if you guys just enjoy my content once again i'd appreciate you guys if you could like comment and subscribe Definitely stick around and hopefully we can get to a thousand subscribers. Once again, I appreciate everyone for watching my videos and guys remember everybody eats.